Last Friday in our stock talk, it's a talk we have on Zoom every Friday, uh, one of our tribe members, Brian, uh, shared with us that his grandfather had passed away and they would be selling some land and his mother would be, ga- would be getting some uh, assets. She already had some. But how do you build a retirement portfolio where you preserve capital and then at the same time reduce the risk, but uh, accordingly uh, participate in the change in the world that is going on and uh, put your money where it's going to grow, generate some income, And how do you build a retirement portfolio? So I gave some thought to it. He, in fact, said, why don't you create it, Carrie? And I said, well, I've got enough to do as it is now. So I gave some thought to it. And I know a couple, they're actually in their 90s, that are doing extremely well, have built a portfolio that has lasted them for the years, and it's growing. And so I thought I'd tap into them. Uh, They gave me access to their portfolio. And I want to share it with you because I believe it just might be the answer to your question, what is the best retirement portfolio that will protect your capital and reduce your risk? Let's get into it. This is not financial advice. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. So this is the couple I was talking about. Yeah, that's, that's Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. Uh, they're both in their 90s, and it, you, you have to admit they've done well for themselves. They've built the Berkshire Hathaway Company, and they are in their, their senior years. Uh, so I thought, well, let's look at wh- how they invest. I had done, I think I've done about five videos on uh, Berkshire Hathaway. I got my interest up because I, back in May of this year, I watched their, their full annual meeting in Omaha, Nebraska, and really then dug into their portfolio. I knew they had gone to Japan and, and made some investments, and then I also knew they had liquidated some investments since uh their May conference, and I wanted to dig into it and see exactly what their structure is today and if if it could be a guiding point or if it could serve as the ideal investment for a retirement couple. I'm going to take you to a Google spreadsheet that I've created that analyzes exactly what they've got now, looks back and says, what have they done thus far this year, and see if we can help Brian figure out a, a, a good portfolio for his mother. Okay, let's take a look at this. This is the Berkshire Hathaway portfolio that Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger have built over the years. And what I want to show you is that it's structured in such a way that it participates in what's going on on in the world today, but it is not heavily uh, geared towards high tech and and high growth. It's a sustainable portfolio that just keeps generating money, thus minimizing risk, but taking advantage of an overall growth market. And it does outperform the S&P 500. So it almost functions like a mutual fund. So I would say to somebody who wants to build a portfolio, go through this with me, see how they're doing it and then learn from it. And maybe at the end, the answer is just buy Berkshire Hathaway shares and let Charlie and Warren take care of it. So let me walk you through what I view. What I've got here is the two parts to their portfolio. These are the stocks they own. These are the businesses that they own. They own uh, probably, uh, as I said, I think they they have about 56 stocks and they have almost that many uh, individual companies that they own that they generate income off of uh, on, on a regular basis. Their largest holding is Apple. And as you can see what I've done, I've shown you how many shares of Apple they own, what stake in the company they own. So they own almost 6% of the outstanding shares in Apple. Uh, As I said, they own 915 million shares. That represents 45.6% of their overall portfolio. It generates a half a percent dividend a year, and that equates to $842,000 in dividend checks they receive from Apple a year. And you'll see that 
that their mate their top holdings are generating them cash no extraordinary dividends uh bank of america pays about three percent and the ketchup makers Kraft heinz pays about 4.8 so as an investor i might say wow that that right there might be my portfolio. It ha, it has growth potential, it has income potential, and maybe that's what I want to do. Now what I've done is I've shown you the additions to their portfolio that they have made thus far this year. These are five Japanese companies in green here. They went over to Japan. They recognize that Japan's uh, market is offering some tremendous growth opportunities. It's ignored for the most part by the investment community, and they invested in these five uh, Japanese companies. Um, I would ad advise you if this if you want to add these to your portfolio, do a little exploration. Do go to Seeking Alpha, look up these ticker symbols, see what kind of growth they're producing, and see if you believe in what Charlie and, and Warren are suggesting here. Then from there, you have th things like um, Activision Blizzard. This is a gaming company that's wrapped up in uh, trying to be acquired by Microsoft. And oddly enough, you aren't going to find Microsoft in their portfolio. Then you have HP. BYD is a Chinese company that is uh, in the business of making electrical vehicles and forklifts and trucks. And they are right now the largest electric vehicle company in China. And they do have an operation in California. Then you have some other companies that you will recognize the signs. I want you to recognize that they are still in America, uh, Bank of America. They are still in Citigroup. They decreased their holdings in Citigroup. And the re reason I bring that up is I'm going to show you here in red the companies that they have liquidated and gotten out of since um, the the first of this year. And the first one, and and what I wanted to show you is Bank of uh, the Bank of New York Mellon, totally liquidated. Uh, used to own three percent of their company. The other bank they used, liquidated was um, U.S. Bank Corp. They used to own a half a percent of the bank shares there. They've totally liquidated that. This is Restoration Hardware. That's an interesting play. Uh, they liquidated their holdings. They used to be very strong in Restoration Hardware, and they do own some companies over here in the individual owned companies that are in the furniture and, and such business. They then also, very, to a lot of interest of the public, totally liquidated their holdings in Taiwan Semiconductor. And I think that Warren, like I, doesn't get excited and is a little fearful of those companies who are exposed to China. But at the same time, their largest holding is Apple who has a tremendous exposure to, to China. Uh, another company they've been adding um, to is that of Occidental Petroleum. Unlike a lot of people who believe that uh, uh, carbon uh, free is going to, to destroy the um, the oil companies. Warren doesn't follow that belief because he is adding to his shares in Occidental Petroleum and he's holding his shares in Chevron. And I understand that. They send him a check a year in dividends. So uh, I can understand why he plays there. Okay. So then, then we get down into some um, some unknown. Let, let, well, first, uh, Marsh McCullen is a insurance brokerage. They liquidated that. That's interesting because Warren makes a lot of his money over on this side of the ledger in insurance companies. So, but he he must have decided the exposure there was not worth the risk. He owns some. Uh, Latin American exposure. You're going to see several Latin American companies here. He owns some Johnson & Johnson, but it's not a, a big exposure of his portfolio. It only amounts to less than 1%. United Parcel, um, 
I, I didn't see that he reacted either positive or negative to the, uh, the strike settlement that they had. I, I did want to point out that he does own some General Motors. This is his General Motors stock here. He reduced his holdings, if I remember correctly. He reduced it by about 50%. I think Warren recognizes that the U.S. motor companies are uh, it have some issues. You'll recognize that he has no Tesla. Now, another uh, port, a part of his portfolio that I want to point out is that of Paramount. He bought Paramount and he is down substantially in it. He bought it at the wrong time, back when Oprah Winfrey did a, a interview with Prince Harry. Um, and then a, a, a large hedge fund liquidated all their shares. And so I would guess that uh, Warren is down somewhere in the neighborhood of 33% on Paramount. Now, also, you need to know that Paramount has a very uh, desirable contract with the NFL. I think, believe it's the NFC portion of it. And I would be anxious to see their report, their quarterly report, after the football season is up and some attention has been brought to that. This all goes into that play with that of um, uh, Disney uh, trying to get rid of ABC, trying to stream ESPN, trying to build their holding in the sports community. So with that in mind, then I want to come down here to the bottom of this spreadsheet and see what kind of cash he has currently about $147 million in cash. And what I did was say, well, he's got that in T-bills. That's, that's generating about $6 billion a year in dividends. That's a fair amount. Then uh, you can see his portfolio is made up of roughly 53% in investable assets. That's this side of the ledger. And then 47% in individual companies. That's this side of the ledger. So it is a balanced portfolio. This would be the hard part for you to duplicate. Uh, you, you, can, you could make the decision that, yeah, I want to own these first uh, seven companies uh, and maybe pick up some of these in my portfolio. But what you're going to have difficult duplicating is all the cash that these companies over here generate. So if you were my mother and you just inherit, inherited a large sum of money, I would advise you to mimic Warren's portfolio, first of all, by buying the B shares, okay? Buying the B shares, holding that, and then do what Warren does and get, hold some cash Put them in some T-bills that are currently paying you 4 to 5%. And then you have mimicked his portfolio all about but this. I don't expect you to go out and buy um, Boats USA or I know he owns a big short part of Pilot Travel. That's the Pilot gas stations that you see. Um, and so he has a, a tremendous exposure but I just don't think you're, if you're, you don't want to be an aggressive investor, I don't think you can beat Berkshire Hathaway. There you have it, Brian. That's my take on if I had a mother that inherited some land and was going to had some sizable assets to invest uh, in for their retirement, that's how I'd go about it. What I'm going to consider doing is working this into our website so that other people who are interested in uh, retirement portfolios, they can come and I'll continue to update the Berkshire Hathaway. I'll plant this video in there with it and we'll create a section within our website uh, for retired folks and we'll add to it and build on it as a source that uh, those people who are in retirement or approaching retirement, well, they can get some guidance not financial advice, just some guidance from somebody who's a retired financial advisor. Okay, hope that was informative. If it was, please uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave something in the comments because that's how uh, Google determines whether or not there is some value here. Talk to you again tomorrow.